Welcome back to my designs. I am James and this is my new woodworking lathe. A new project and uh, something I'm quite excited about. So let's jump straight into it and see what we've got. Let's get started. So this is my recent acquisition. It is a Walker Turner company, which is an American made uh, machine and it's called the driver. So there was quite a long range that went on for quite some time. Uh, during the uh, the company if you want to find out a little bit more about it everything that I know I have learned from um, uh, vintagemachinery.org and there's a lathe website that's got a little bit more details onto it uh, reason why I bought this is because it's length so in metric terms we can process up to around 960 millimeters uh, from uh, point to point and uh, it's old, it looks great, and uh, I can do a lot with it. So I'll bring you around, show you around, and see what we got. So this machine is a ball bearings. The age of this machine is what, uh, what I've been told, or what I can kind of figure out, is uh, 1939 plus would up to around the end of the war, maybe to the early 50s. But a lot of changes happen to these, and I'm only kind of going off uh, pictures with other people that put the dates on. Typically, next to the uh, the logo here, uh, there would have been the machinery tag with a serial number and, and perhaps a date from what I can see. There's a few little bits missing on here that I'm going to have to fabricate, modify and, um, and, and you know, re-engineer. Um, but what kind of really excited me about this is this is a, a very rare attachment, which is the, uh, the X and Y compound slide, which is done for light metalwork duties which I thought, I'm not going to use it as I have a Myford ML7 in the corner. However, it's really nice to have. And um, to be honest, it's something that I wanted to be the, uh, the custodian of. I'll very quickly go around some of the features that this in particular machine has and uh, just some of the bits that I'm missing and something that you probably should look out for if you're going to look at uh, one of these yourself. So this is a very, very rare machine especially in the UK. Uh, I've, I've never seen one. I've bought many, many vintage uh, lathes, both metal and wood. And this was the first one that I'd actually seen and the bloke had just put on old lathe for sale. So uh, went up to Scarborough Way, which is probably about two, three hours from where I live and uh, managed to, to pick one of these up. So they are a different spindle nose thread. I'll put all the descriptions uh, in, the, in the description, uh, but I, I believe these are the same as a, a Union Jubilee lathe. I could be wrong. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it's the same as a Union Jubilee. Uh, for its time, this is pretty amazing and extremely well well made, good quality, beautiful castings. It's got that really nice kind of deco kind of look and, and, and feel and quality to it. So uh, this is again missing some parts that would have been, uh, this is the top belt cover. You've got two holes at the back here that would have had the motor mounting rear mounted at the back and it was quite high up. It was a bit of a weird looking thing when I first bought it because the space under the casting uh, I assumed, and it's probably an option to have it, but a, a undermounted, which is what mine will be. We've got a indexing uh, option here that's at the side of the pulley. I think this is a, a just a wonderful design to have. Really, really clever. A lot of work has gone into this and making this. So I think for the day it was quite a, um, yeah, it, it was quite an upmarket machine. Bearing so good. I don't think this machine has had a great deal of work throughout its lifetime. I bought this from a farm and the guy did house clearances and he reckons it was basically in, in the back of a shipping container in a, uh, in a school somewhere for some storage. I don't know how true that is. We'd never know for sure. Uh, so yeah, mine is missing the motor mounting plate here and the, the belt guard uh, onto the top. The spindle threads, if you are looking at something like this, is always important to make sure that these are in good condition. Uh, the spindle threads, these to me look uh, like they're in excellent condition, just in need of a, of a decent clean. Bearings can always be replaced, it's not too big of a job uh, if you've got the right tools, equipment, and it's these attachments, uh, face plates and you know trucks and that type of thing um, are always nice to have with a machine if you can get them. Onto the tailstock now. So both the headstock and the tailstock are Morse Taper 2s. What I find absolutely incredible is that if this is 1939 on a wood turning lathe, uh, we have a self-ejecting tailstock, which, mm, yeah, metal lathes of the era, especially in the UK, were, uh, were, were all self-ejecting, or a lot of them were. My wife, it isn't. 
Uh, but for a wood lathe of that era, it, you know, that's that's fantastic. Uh, I was lucky enough that, you know, mine is free, although we've had some damage here. I think potentially it's been dropped or, or, or something of, of the nature. We've also missing off this lock here. But both the front and the back, as I mentioned, is Morse Taper 2. Uh, another nicety that we've got is plenty of clearance here for your uh, movement back and forward. Mine's a little bit uh, stiff because we've, we've got quite a lot of contaminants on the, um, on the ways here. When I first saw this, I thought it was a kind of like a, I thought it'd be a dovetail with some gibbs on the side, but it's not. This is for aligning left and right the tailstock, which I, I think that's absolutely amazing. And you can adjust these and then lock these off. And it's, you know, it's pretty amazing to say that these have, have kept in shape uh, all these years. So everything's very nice, really well made and uh, plenty of adjustment. I've got the uh, the quick speed adjust uh, winder here that's missing, but I can easily um, machine one of those up to then replace. This isn't uh, kind of like a side lever or a side lock, uh, a saddle lock, whatever you want to call it for this. It's uh, you'd need a, a spanner. We might be able to get some, um, uh, you know, the adjustable lock nuts on here that you can get, maybe modify something. But again, really pleased with it. So this is the uh, tool rest, uh, the banjo on here and your actual um, uh, tool rests onto the top. Uh, very similar to the, to the headstock, you need a, a three quarter inch, uh, I think that'll be a UNC I'm guessing, uh, spanner on here to then move and adjust this. This is quite nice for me, this, this is fine. Uh, the modern ones have handles at the front that are kind of like a cam lock uh, shaping. You've got a one inch tail, uh, you've got a one inch stem for your uh, tool rest onto here and we've got this one which uh, I'm guessing 12 inch and then we've uh, we've we've got a four inch there so quite nice uh, a really good way to tell if these wood layers have had kind of a lot of work is really take a closer eye on these tool rests here no I'm, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this or, or be able to focus in on these uh, but what we're seeing is, uh, is is very little use and damage if I was to compare this to uh, one of my other wood lathes then um, the, it's, it's chalk and cheese there's a lot of damage on, on the other ones that I've purchased things like the headstock as well feels uh, quite nicely uh, it feels really really good it did come with this four jaw independent chuck uh, that we've got no key the guys just fashioned one out of an old allen key and ground it down a little bit might come in handy for something but uh, I'll be intending to if I can't find a chuck for this I'll machine up a back plate and uh, and get one from um, uh, a Bernard style wood turning chuck that I'll be able to fit onto here but I'm not sure it shouldn't be too hard there might be something second hand that I can get but it would be nice uh, if I can use my jaws on other things so this is the uh, optional extra for the time from what I understand uh, the uh, the compound that you can have so you've got a, a an x and y your top slide uh, we haven't of course got a saddle on here with a um, with a lead screw it is just basically for, for very very light metal working uh, but you have got an extremely large uh, a, a top slide that you can have here so maybe boring really really square boxes you can you can square this up uh, to the chucks or the face plates with a with a one two three block and then get your tooling around here uh, I don't know what this is it, it almost looks like it was a man-made kind of small tool rest maybe some sort of support to get a scraper in there something like that uh, but what the plan for this will be is to strip everything down into componentry size and get every uh, every paint everything that's on this uh, to be fully stripped down and, and ready for a full restoration very square profile acme thread on here so that's quite nice if we ever need to reproduce these uh, both are dovetailed and uh, we've also got a gib on this side for adjustment of any uh, of any play here but the uh, the top is feeling extremely nice there's a little bit of backlash as you'd expect but we might be able to adjust something on here with this uh, threaded collar from what i'm seeing it's kind of looking like this section might have been used more than the actual wood turning capabilities so perhaps some uh, some farmer or school has used this as a basic metal working uh, attachment on here but i'm not seeing any indication of any kind of brass filings or or metal filings a little bit odd it's just a, a very very thick residue of um uh tree carcass by the looks of it but yeah, I'm really pleased. This leather obviously wouldn't have been original. I think this is just to uh, to, to kind of protect the, the both the ways and the um, and the spindle here. And just a little bit of an update for everybody that's been following along with the uh, with the channel and uh, and the things that we've been doing. This is my uh, Viceroy TDS six uh, wood lathe that we've uh, that we've kind of worked, and it's been a rolling restoration. 
I'll do a kind of a quick update video at some point on this. Uh, but absolutely no troubles at all with the VFD that we've been working on. Uh, it's been actually fantastic and I've recently installed this lock line that I'm kind of trialling to see if I like it. And so far so good. It's been really good. I've been making my own tool rests. And uh, for those that don't know, this is what we mentioned earlier about the Bernard style trucks for woods. So this is uh, very similar to a metalworking lathe. It has the jaws uh, flush cut off. It's a four jaw uh, automatic truck. It's not four door, uh, four jaw independent. A four jaw scroll, if you want to be technical, it's a four jaw scroll with a, um, a third hand, a, a third party back plate that um, has, has been mounted onto this. And it's, uh, so far it worked really well. Uh, but the, the chuck jaws themselves are of very cheap and poor quality. They're very, very soft. But it's working okay. And this is the third lathe that I've got, which is a 1952 3-ish. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, a Glaswegian made, which is in Scotland. Uh, Meteor wood lathe. Uh, this was one of the machines that uh, my, my first machine that I didn't make. Uh, that restored and it's running a treadmill motor. I've had nothing but uh, success with this machine. It's been really, really good, very robust, very th uh, featherable uh, in regards to its uh, uh, speeds. And um, it's been very, very good. I've had absolutely no issues with this and it's, uh, it's done a lot of work for me. Really enjoyed it. This has got a, uh, a cheap Chinese Rutland's truck on here that is kind of like a generic, I think they're the same as a Nova, but I, I couldn't confirm that. But again, I've got a Morse Taper 2 machine. My Viceroy blade that you've just seen is a Morse Taper 3, and this is, of course, a Morse Taper 1. So it's kind of good in a way because everything is, you know, all the tooling is kept for their own, um, but it's a pain because you have to buy everything again. Um, this has got a different size uh, tool rest in here, so I think it's a three quarter. Um, it's a three quarter size, 18 millimeters, and these are tool rests that I've, I've made, uh, machined my own uh, M12 fine uh, thread pitches onto there, which is quite nice. It's good. Enjoy this machine. I, I enjoy it a lot, but who needs three lathes? Um, so I'm undecided what I actually want to do with this machine as of yet. Um, but I love it. It's got a, a, a zero speed uh, up to around 5,000. We've got really, really heavy uprated bearings and I did a full video restoration of, um, of, of kind of restoring this as well as making the control panel and uh, using modifying and adapting the uh, treadmill motor that we had. So if you want to look at that, then kind of search it on my channel and you'll be able to check that out. Great for spindles. I don't use it for bowl turning anymore because I've got a big one. But just to mention very, very quickly, because I have referenced the Myford lathe a few times in this video, if you're not familiar with my channel, this is my metalworking lathe that, um, that I'm able to, to reproduce and manufacture a lot of the components for all the other machines that I have in my workshop. So uh, when I mention things like making, uh, you know, repairing the self-ejecting tail stock on my machine, I can uh, reproduce the, uh, the locking handle at the top and, and things like making my own tool rests. This is what I'm doing it. So just for clarification purposes, I'm not doing anything uh, that I shouldn't do on a wood lathe. I'm doing everything on a, on a, on a proper dedicated metalworking lathe. Moving on. So I was asked by a few people on my Instagram to do a quick kind of walk round and a walk through of the machine that I bought. So I'm hoping this is kind of up to, uh, up to kind of specs. It's not gonna be another restoration video because I've done quite a few of them now and they're, they're a bit of a pain. It's a bit of a rarity of a machine as well. So if you do a restoration video, they kind of don't do very well because no one's got one, so why bother? But I wanted to do a walk around as well as tell my kind of um, plans for this machine. So uh, eagle eyes of you will know that this is uh, got some CLS on the base. So these are laminated uh, wood that has been uh, drilled through and then uh, it basically cramped together with uh, all thread, threaded bar, depending on where you are in the world. And uh, it's actually going to be connected to a hoist and going up and down into the rafters. This might spark a little bit of a controversy, but I'll run you through what I've got and what I'm planning to do. So what we're going to be having is I have quite a tall workshop, but I don't have a lot of space uh, actually on top of workbenches. And this is quite a big lump, especially in this size here. If I was in America somewhere, you seem to buy a small house and it comes with an aircraft hanger of space. But we'll, we'll, we'll move off that topic. 
so this has got some eyelets that are going to be bolted through, uh, uh, full-on connection uh, bolted, and everything is uh, proper rated lifting equipment that we've got here. So these are one meter, uh, 12 millimeter thick, uh, all steel bonded bar, um, steel wire rope. And uh, each one is rated for one metric ton. So that's a thousand kg and it's a certain amount of pounds, I've no idea. And this is then connected, this is a proper uh, shackle, what do you call it? I can't remember what you call that. And it will be going on to a quarter of a ton uh, engine hoist, uh, electric hoist that's going to go up and down in between the rafters here. I've still got some modifications to do on the base and a level of kind of flattening and making sure that this is secure and stable. We will be fitting a three-phase motor onto this with variable frequency drive and full control box, the same as the um, same as what I did on the uh, Viceroy TD6 uh, bolt turning lathe that you saw earlier. Plans for the restoration is I've got to spend the next few hours of breaking this completely down, removing all the bearings, and any kind of uh, anything that's bolted onto this is going to be taken off. Uh, the bearings, although they are fine, um, I don't like doing jobs twice. So the bearings are quite a lot of money. I've been quoted £180 for the bearing sets. I will be taking those out, replacing them, uh, because I'm going to be getting everything shot blasted. So I've got some bungs to make in here to make sure that the balls don't get damaged. And uh, everything is going to be shot blasted and then, uh, and then restored. And you know things like the rivets are going to be taken off and the, the spindle is going to be checked uh, with a micrometer to, to test for any wear. Uh, I'm not going to do a video on that. I'm going to get it done uh, because it's bloody cold at the minute and uh, I will return with hopefully making some larger spindles and I think that's going to be a wrap just before I go because I always kind of get asked on, uh, on on this topic but this is a, a three-phase motor it's a uh, one horsepower motor so it's a, a 0.75 of a, um, of a kilowatt and it's a twin pole, which is a, an RPM of 2,880 RPM. I know that because I've just read the tag. Now, I'm going to be connecting this uh, upside down. It's going to have a forward and a reverse uh, function. We'll be making sure that, of course, that it's natural forward will be the correct rotation of the motor, which is something that I've done and cocked up in the past. Now, um, I'm going to be taking the spindle out anyway, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be using uh, this. But if, you, if you're not aware, in the UK, this is called Lockline. The older generation will know this is Brammer belt that was uh, that was laminated piece of uh, pieces of leather. Lockline bought out Brammer uh, many many years ago, as far as I know, and it's now this. Um, uh, I don't know what material it is. It's like a tufnel, almost tufnel, flexible tufnel type laminated uh, material. And what this allows you to do is uh, adjust the the of course the length of the belt to the um, to the appropriate sizing uh, of the uh, of the length of the pulley needed. That sounded very complicated. You can adjust this to however long you need it. So I don't know if I need that, but this is something again to bear in mind that this is a one directional belt, technically. Uh, a lot of people fit these onto machines and then they wear down massively or destroy the pulleys because these are a one directional belt. Although I run mine in reverse and you know, who cares? So yeah, there's just something to bear in mind. This will be going upside down and I'll have a bolt position, a bolt pattern underneath uh, that I can then adjust uh, the, the, the tilt uh, and the, uh, the alignment of the belt to the spindle headstock. So that has been a quick video on the Walker Turner, the driver wood lathe. Uh, I'll, as I say, I'll leave as much information as I can in the description in case you've got one and you want to do some fact finding. I'll try and make it as easy as I possibly can. Loads of options on these. It's kind of like uh, the ML8, uh, Myford ML8 at the time. They had like band saws and table saws and planers that would rip your face off. Uh, so very cool, very interesting. If you have one of these in the UK, uh, even more so, that would be very cool to hear from you. Let's see what yours looks like. I'd like to get as close to the, uh, the original paint colour as I possibly can, but it's probably going to be grey because I have some grey in stock. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Leave a comment and um, if you see one of these machines, uh, pick them up. They're great, uh, really ideal and uh, very good quality, very easy to work on any vintage wood lathe. I implore you to... Uh, to buy an older vintage machine than a new Chinese one and work on it because it's a lot of fun and very rewarding and a lot better than a Chinese one. 
Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. And uh, no doubt you'll probably see this either all shot blasted and uh, all painted up and, and start to be worked on on my Instagram, which I'll leave a, again, I'll do the thing. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.